We've been talking about this opioid crisis from West Virginia to D.C., to the rap world, to our neighbors' homes, and sometimes even in our own homes. And Juice World was open about his struggles. In fact, he had tweeted that he'd stopped abusing codeine for his girlfriend, saying, learn this, everyone. Addiction kills. All but you can overcome. If what his girlfriends are saying is true, he was still dealing and struggling with this addiction. And so we called in Dr. Lippy Roy, who specializes in addiction. She's here with us now. Um, listen, whether you listen to his music or not, it's another senseless death likely tied to this opioid addiction. Yeah. Juice Swirl's friend said that three Percocet, lean, at one point in time in his body, what does that do to someone? Yeah, thank you for so much for talking about this really important public health problem and epidemic, uh, opioids specifically, but addiction more broadly. Most of my patients and most people who are using opioids are actually using multiple substances. We have to wait for the toxi official yeah. toxicology report, but um, yeah, opioids uh, such as Percocet, uh, which is a combination of oxycodone, which is an opioid, and acetaminophen, which is commercial known as Tylenol, um, along with lean, which is a cough syrup, along with codeine and other substances can cause a whole host of problems, including shutting down your breathing. According to people on the plane, he started to seize. He started to have seizures. Yeah. And it made me think of the rapper Rick Ross, who was on our show not long ago. I want to play what Rick said to me in an interview where he revealed he also dealt with an addiction that he has since conquered. Let's listen to it. At one time, I was um, drinking Tessinex and codeine at one time. What is Tessinex? Tessinex was something that really helped me. I felt relaxed at the time. It was something I would sit in the studio and drink for hours at a time. After three or four years, I wouldn't get no sleep, and so that's what began me having seizures. So I you began were... suffering seizures. So he started having seizures, ended up nearly losing his life. Uh, Juice World had a seizure, may have gone into cardiac arrest after that. Is that what this does yeah. when you have all of this in your body? So opioids cause a whole host of uh, problems. Opioid intoxication can really shut things down, slow your heart rate, your blood pressure. But how it really kills people is shuts down your breathing. That's how people die of overdose. But it's actually the acetaminophen, the Tylenol, when that's taken in high doses, can cause convulsions and seizures. Again, he might have also been taking <coughs> other substances, which all together could have caused a whole host Why the Narcan work? That's a great question. So Narcan, also known as naloxone, is a really effective antidote at reversing over, um, opioid-induced overdose. The problem here is that it could have maybe didn't work for a number of reasons. Maybe he took a high dose of opioids and they just didn't give him enough Narcan. It's possible that if, it was, if he was taking fentanyl, that's a really potent uh, opioid. That was effective. But if he was using other substances, remember, Narcan will only reverse opioids. It won't reverse benzos, alcohol, or any other substance. So whatever else is in your body, it does not have an impact on it. So I was Correct. listening to that interview, and if what um, the ex-girlfriend was saying was true, I thought, how was he even able to walk and function yeah. with that amount of drugs and different types in his body? Yeah, that's a great question. What I've learned from taking care of patients uh, who've been struggling with addiction for years is that the body is this remarkable machine. We, we put it through so much and it can really ad adapt. But at a certain point, you know, addiction is a chronic medical disease yeah. and these right. people need care. And, and I know that some of these medicines are prescribed, which is what we're talking about. And we've seen companies now fined and some even going to jail. But this leads to the heroin crisis as well, because once you can't get it in a prescription form, yeah. people then go to heroin for that same relief, if yes. that's the word. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah. Is. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, the, the current opioid crisis is different today than it was when it started in the late 90s. It was mostly prescription opioids like OxyContin. And then it went, the second wave was heroin. And then the third wave, which is what we're kind of still dealing with now, is fentanyl, and um, which is, which is you know, back in the 2000s, only 3% of overdose deaths were associated with fentanyl. Now it's over 50%. So fentanyl is really powerful, and it's the major reason why we have most of the overdose deaths today. All right, well, thank you so much.